If you work with WordPress, you must have heard about official rules that must be followed while contributing to the core. It is great that they exist because they help keeping the code consistent, which is crucial in such project size, but I don't like some of them. Hi guys, I'm Przemek and in this short material I will discuss why I don't use WordPress coding standards when developing solutions there, what I use instead and why. If you still decide to use them, I will show you how to achieve this. So, let's begin! Are the WordPress coding standards bad? It depends who's reading the code. For me, for example, keeping the class prefix for class file names when I use more structured approach seems to be unnecessary duplication. Putting spaces on both sides of parentless looks ugly as well as a long array syntax instead of the short one. The other conditions make the code readability worse too. And I cannot ignore the worst part using tabs instead of spaces. And don't get me wrong, we talk about tastes, so I don't mean that they are wrong. I don't want to convince you that green is better than blue. Also, they have many great rules like forbidden PHP short tags, one object structure per file or requiring visibility declarations in classes. But for some of them, I just have a slightly different taste. I also share Josh Pollock's opinion in this area. It states that Following the established best practices for PHP development makes more sense and doing so leads to better, more maintainable and more integrable core. Generally, I insist you to check out the whole article. It's from 2018, so not everything might be actual, but the ideas there are close to me. I always try to search for solutions that helps me to be prepared for other more interesting development opportunities, especially if they don't affect negati negatively my or my client's business. WordPress for me was a great point to start to learn a lot of things, but now I'm looking for more aspiring projects and it's just easier if I follow wider, wider usage rules. I like the idea provided by Josh in his article. Using widely used coding standards might be treated as escaping from the WordPress bubble. And it worked fine in my case. For instance, my first time with the Enterprise Laravel project was pretty easy from the coding style perspective because I knew the rules used there well. If not WordPress coding standards, what else? The rules defined by the PHP Fig Group Standard Committee for PHP Development like PSL1 or PSL12 are much more widely used than the ones defined by WordPress. Laravel uses PSR and Symfony is built on PSR too. Since I mostly try to write a code that doesn't limit me just to one ecosystem when I can, I choose the PHP way rather than the WordPress way by default. It opens the door for more projects and stacks. Also, with the right approach, we can build the reusable code decoupled from infrastructure, meaning that we can use some parts of the code to create it in WordPress, even outside WordPress. If the code adheres to widely used standards, it's better to fit them in other stacks. Of course, this argument can be easily undermined because there are tools like PHP CBF, but it is still good for me. While creating themes or plugins in WordPress, I use the PSR12 for coding style with a few custom additions and PSR4 for autoloading. When committing to the core, there's no other option than using official guidelines. That's, the, that's required by the project itself. If you decide to use the WordPress coding standards, you need to install them, since they are not available by default in the PHP code sniffer, so you can do it with Composer, as here. Then we need to open our PHP CS configuration and change the default standard from PSR12 to WordPress. And don't be scared of all the errors in the PHP CS report now. If you link the files, you will see that your codebase must be drastically adjusted. You can fire the PHP CVF script to fix auto-fixable problems and reduce the number of them, but still, you will have more manual work to do. Like for example, adding the docs comments to all the classes properties and functions manually. And that's only one of the par one part of the fixes. And that's why it's good to choose the standard at the beginning, because you will have less work to do. So which coding style should you choose? I have no power to answer this. 
remember that in cases like this we talk about taste, so choose the standard that fits your needs and use it. You have many options like WordPress, Peer, PSR1, 12, 2, SqueezeZen and many many more. You can even build your own coding standards, which have been widely discussed in the previous material, so check it out if you want to learn how to achieve this. Our team has been using PSR12 for a long time and we never had the problems with this. So what about you? Let me know in the comments which coding standard you use for developing WordPress solutions and why. WordPress, PSR or maybe the custom one? I will be glad for your feedback. And that's all. If you managed to stay with me until now, please let me know your thoughts. And if you enjoyed this video, please remember to thumbs up. And if you don't subscribe me already, please do it now, since I will be posting more stuff related to the linting process and generally related to the web development. I hope that you will like it too. So thank you for your time today and see you next week probably. Yeah, bye bye.